Hi everybody, this is Anne. It's always a challenge to find pottery projects which appeal to everybody because we all have different preferences and skill levels. Some of us are strictly hand builders and others may be very comfortable on the wheel. In this video, there's something for everybody. I have a project with several variations that'll appeal to the hand builders and it'll also have aspects of wheel throwing that even the beginner can master. We're gonna be making bread plates. First things first, we'll be offsetting the clay for these projects, so you'll need a bigger bat than usual. The bat will probably need to be at least 12 inches or larger in diameter. The first step is to roll out a half inch slab and place it on a piece of plastic wrap to avoid sticking. I usually do slab work on the work table, but to avoid jumping back and forth to the wheel, I'll just demonstrate everything on the bat. This plate will be rectangular, so I found this piece of plywood that I could use as my template and cut it with an X-Acto knife. The slab edges were raw and sharp, so I placed a piece of plastic over the slab and rounded the edges. The plastic tightens over the surface and will give the slab a bit of a beveled look. I want to create a round, recessed area at the top of the slab. I used my wet finger to find the center of the bat. I also found the center on the slab where the recess will be and laid the slab over that center point. When I turned the wheel, I checked to make sure my slab was centered correctly. I wet my fingers and made sure the slab was stuck down to the bat along the edges. To create this recess, I simply began to push down at the center point about a quarter inch deep. I then widened it out. The displaced clay will begin to form a wall around that divot. I use my fingers around that wall of clay to push down on it and shape it into a nice rim. Once I got the rim nice and even, I flattened the clay inside the recess. To decorate the plate, I'm using this bamboo stick that I found in the grocery store. I created a border first by just laying it down along the edge and gently pushing it into the clay to impress a clean line. I continued this all the way around. I then use the stick inside the border and impress straight lines from side to side. I continued this pattern at different angles to create intersections of lines. The stick is just flexible enough so I can keep it from impressing past the border, but if you do go past it, just wet your finger and wipe it away. When you're happy with the design, you want to dry it flat and slowly. I move the piece to a clean bat. I place some paper down over the plate to raise its height to the top of the rim, then I placed a clean bat over the plate. Here's a plate I made earlier with the same design that's already dried to leather hard. I thought it'd be fun to add some detail to the impressed lines by doing some carving. I just carve parallel lines at different angles into each intersected area to get this cool textured look. I find this soft, dry paintbrush helpful to clean up the small shavings. Now all it needs is a little container to go into that recessed area, so I'm gonna pinch a small bowl. I rolled out a quarter inch slab. I found the top of a jar to use as a template. I traced around it and cut it out. I rounded the edges like I did before. I began using my thumbs to stretch the center of the slab outward towards the edge.
to make sure it was nice and round, I used a 2-inch styrofoam ball with a tiny piece of plastic over it to shape it. I just placed the clay over the top and rounded it to the form. You can see that the bottom is still round and the edges are raw. I let the bowl dry to leather hard, then flattened the bottom for a nice foot and trimmed the edge for a nice rim. I just put a nice celadon glaze over the top. The celadons really break nicely over that texture. Now I can put some olive oil or some melted butter in the bowl and dip my bread into it. For the next project, I again started with a half inch slab. I'm going to use my laser cut rolling pin for this. These are so much fun. I actually designed this one and Sharon Hoppy did the laser cutting. With a little pressure, it creates a nice imprinted texture in the slab. This plate will be an oval shape. I found this casserole dish in the dollar store. I placed it over the slab and impressed the edges. Like the others, I rounded the edges. Again, I found the center of the bat and the center of where my recess will be on the slab and placed them over each other. This time, I'm going to carve out the recess. I used my needle tool to mark out how big I wanted the slot to be. I used my flat carving tool to remove the clay from inside the outline about a quarter inch down. To get rid of any jagged edges, I pushed the clay bits to the inside and cut them off. I also added a swirl. For the bowl, I thought I'd simply throw a small container. There it is. I like that. Again, I just added a nice celadon glaze to break over the texture and glaze the bowl with the same glaze. Here's one more version. Again, I started with a half inch slab and placed a piece of plastic wrap over the top. I impress the cap of a Gatorade bottle into the clay by rows. The plastic keeps the cap from going in too far into the clay. I painted some cornstarch over the top to prepare it for stamping. Here's a cool Celtic knot stamp that I'll use. It was made for leather work, but it works for clay too. I gently press the stamp into each of the circles. I drew a free form shape on top of a piece of paper and cut it out for the template. I just placed it over the slab and cut it out with an X-Acto knife. This time I decided to make a raised slot for my bowl. 
I rolled out a quarter inch slab and cut out a thin circle the size of the slot that I wanted and just wired it off. I found the center of the bat where I wanted the ring to be on the slab. I centered the clay ring on top and pressed it down on top of the slab. Once it was stuck down, I just rounded the edges. The only thing left I needed to do was smooth down the inside of the ring and add a swirl. For the bowl, I rolled out another quarter inch slab. I created a template for this. I lightly traced the template over the clay and added the circle and stamp texture to it. I then cut out the shape from the slab. I beveled the edge of the first side. I turned over the slab and beveled the other side. I scored and slipped the edges, then attached the sides together. I used a plastic wrapped styrofoam cone to round out the bowl. I wanted to bring in the bottom edge a bit, so I attached the rim of the bowl to the bat with water and pressure. I used my finger to push the bottom edge inward. I used my needle tool to trim away the uneven edge. Then I wired the bowl off the bat. I rolled another quarter inch slab and attached it to the wheel. I used my finger to find the center ring and place the cup centered down over the slab. I used a needle tool to trace around this. I picked up the cup and scored and slipped the bottom. I then attached the body to the foot. I trimmed the excess clay away. I used my finger to connect the two and then shape the foot. I used my fingers to even, round, and soften the rim. Oh, that's cute. There, that fits well. Again, I just needed a glaze to highlight the texture. It would be nice to put an Irish potato bread on this, maybe with some honey. Mm. These are but three variations on this theme. There are limitless possibilities of shapes, textures, and sizes that you can utilize. I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments section below. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio. Maybe with some honey. Mm.